Hey family, this is Sister Evangelist Dawn B. Anderson, BKA True Seeker 5000, getting on here with a real quick Preachers of Detroit preview, review message for you. Letting you guys all know, as I do at the uh, beginning season of each episode, I let you guys know that God willing, I will be doing the, the show reviews for you. Um, but just telling you not to watch my reviews if you are a fan or a stan of the show. I actually do Christian reviews of the Preachers of dot 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 franchise uh for the last few years i've been doing it and i'm actually um the number one christian reviewer of the franchise because many of you guys who are watching uh right now you're living in the truth and you've been watching and supporting me and to all of you i say thank you and to the rest of you guys who are uh, the show fans, I again warn you not to watch my reviews. I actually hold these so-called Christian leaders up to the light of the word. And it is the word of God that we saints are to judge them by and also by their fruits. It's time out for all of the foolery in the church. There's so many hireling tear jack leg preachers popping up with all these churches all over and they must be exposed and now they're coming out of my hometown which is Detroit and I actually had a chance to uh, check one out in this season now this is some of my testimony that I'll try to make go as quickly as possible uh, I have to go check on these neck bones that I'm cooking over here in this crock pot plus I told y'all I would actually try and not to hold y'all hostage in this season <laughs> like I did last season you know I'm gonna try to get my reviews down to like five to seven minutes like Alan Nitra Hall do okay she still haven't told me how to do it I'm gonna, I'm gonna call her and find out how she do it Bad seven minutes review okay <laughs> but yeah um i'm just gonna come straight out and just tell the real truth okay there's now a popular pastor on the show uh named pastor timothy alden okay he was on uh preachers of la show for like one scene very briefly uh in one of the episodes of uh preachers of la now he's on preachers of detroit Okay, he is from Detroit, but he moved out into California in 2004. Uh, though he was only in a couple scenes of the show, and he felt like a breath of fresh air from the heathen preachers on the show, <laughs> Preachers of L.A. show, um, with his 50-year kept virginity. I had high hopes for him. Okay, but I found out some real truth about him and what kind of ministry he conducts over these past several months since the show aired. Uh, there's so much and I, I had it all written down, but I don't want to be too long. So I'll just let the rest out as I begin to do the reviews uh, for the Preachers of Detroit show as we go along. Okay, um, but here's a spoiler. I mean, just he's a prosperity preacher you know he preaches prosperity gospel like the other tear wolves okay uh he and i spoke privately over a, a, about a month or so and i asked all types of probing questions um he knows who i am as a top blogger of the show and he pretty much told me i feel what he thought i wanted to hear okay um but his sermons said different okay and things that he said a lot of things turned out not to be true what he said to me um i am he invited me and my daughter out to one of his pop-up churches in detroit um a pop-up church is just basically a church that they designed for him to pop tent anywhere like um you know some of you guys remember how preachers used to do revivals back in the day they would go from city to city with their little pup tents and showing their fake healing miracles and all that up under them tents and stuff got people running around i'm healed say you know mess um i just see it as a uh revival church you going from city to city with your ministry you know taking people money but anyway um so we went to the event and <laughs> this is the super super short version of the story that i'm really you know making it short uh for time's sake but um 
we went there we worshiped first which was a good thing then he preached for three hours mentioned nothing about Jesus everything was God's going to restore the city of Detroit uh, people will have jobs houses cars everything he preached was fleshly and to my flesh and my spirit was hungry you know um, I thought for sure by the end you know our spirits would get fed but not so um, he laid hands on me like a face hugger <laughs> from alien okay and he almost actually pushed me down onto the floor rocking my head back and forth so hard I was afraid that a spirit was going to jump out and get on me okay it was it was the kind of fear that you might get if someone like flipped the bottom of your lip with their dirty finger just you know that <laughs> that recoil back like worry like oh my goodness you know I told him <laughs> later on that he was you know too aggressive you know I told him that the worship was good but I had an ought with him about how he did not mention Jesus okay and and the need for people all the people of the city to actually repent before God can start blessing them which is in the word second chronicles 7 14 and all throughout the bible he got all defensive and he went off calling me a religious critic and a fault finder and how i need to um search out his previous sermons where he mentions jesus and his archive sermons which later i asked where these so-called archive sermons were you know that he mentioned in jesus and he ignored me of course because he was mad at me <laughs> after <laughs> i tell you all this um what happened but so he didn't answer me uh, which didn't bother me a bit uh, but I upon further research that I did I found the sermons um, on his church website and they were ranging from uh, $5 to $15 per sermon so yeah sorry if you guys any of you were broken looking for a word from prophet pastor Timothy Alden um, you're gonna need to be getting that five to fifteen dollars up first before you can get word from the prophet uh p-r-o-f-i-t <laughs> but anyway um i did a background check of the churches that he said that he was reared up from and i found that they were started back in the early 2002 and was broken up because of some corruption that was going on among the pastors um then he then they re resurfaced again under a different church name uh they basically wasn't doing the will of God so God shut them down and, and and that's when he moved out to California in 2004 um, now here he is which is uh, he's representing a seed sprouted from that mess uh, he named his church city of praise okay and from their teachings uh, he got his teachings from those previous churches and what he says is the mission of his church city of praise is this quote city of praise is the formation of a new breed of people with a diversity that transcends generational racial jurisdictional and vocational lines united in becoming a spiritual habitation for God and manifesting his kingdom on earth end quote so like what does that mean <laughs> like why isn't the mission the commission of Jesus Christ go out into the world preach the gospel to every nation making disciples healing the sick what none of that in there no no nothing about winning souls or nothing about about this church it's about looking good it's about swag he wearing his his little t-shirts that say holy swag and you know I, I wasn't aware that the Holy Ghost had swag or he was mass producing t-shirts that say holy swag on it uh, he wore a shirt a, 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 that said God on it big old bold letters G-O-D so that you know and and it was bothersome you know I, I kind of put a, a a dot on that picture and he saw it and he you know he got a little defensive about that but I had to point that out to him 
like what are you, what is what does that mean what are you doing god g o d that's what you preachers consider yourself okay that's not good <laughs> and you guys are thinking it's cool because they have these shirts you know but they're really telling you what they think of themselves it's a pride thing satan said in one movie i think it was the devil's advocate he said vanity is his favorite sin the devil said it. so uh you pastors need to repent from that but anyway um he's out here tickling ears and he's not the only one all of them are you know he's out here people pleasing that's what the problem is you know he he may throw in a little shade info about the government and you know other goings ons what they're doing but he doesn't preach the gospel or offer Jesus to the people you know he may look at this video and try to start doing that now but there's no power behind it it won't be any power that's why Jesus had to show up at the event uh, let me get to that <laughs> I'm going to get to that. Hold on. I'm jumping ahead. But um, basically, you know, he's popping up over uh, all over in various cities, telling people what they want to hear, giving them no conviction from the Lord or a word, you know, yet he claims to be a prophet. You know, no, he's making a prophet, toting all those baskets of money out from city to city, draining their pockets dry, leaving them still thirsty and hungry for the word of God. I told him that he should have offered Jesus to the people because Jesus is the living water and he is real bread, living bread for the people. He was upset. <laughs> you know, he said that he knows that his sermon and that the the prophecy that he got for the city of Detroit being prosperous was from God because his two-year-old niece said that she saw Jesus there and that Jesus was doing a lot of talking alongside of him in the room. Now, I don't know if that was the truth because like I said, he said many things to me that has not been true. So I don't know if that was true or not that this little two-year-old girl saw Jesus talking while we were at this event um, that he invited me to but I want to hope that it was true I know that if Jesus was there it was because the worship was so crazy and good okay I know that he inhabits uh, God inhabits our praises. He will come down when the praise is just right. Okay, I'm a worshiper. I know. Okay. But, so if there's great worship, yes, I'm looking for Jesus to be there, definitely. So it's not that hard for me to believe. Um, I also know that Jesus would not have let a spirit jump on me. So that's another reason why I hope that that was the truth that the little girl saw jesus <laughs> okay and uh number two if jesus was actually there speaking then he was speaking into our spirits what we needed to hear and what needed to be said because pastor prophet timothy was not doing the job okay that he was supposed to be doing because he was too busy people pleasing and ear tickling putting on the show for the cameras that were there oh yeah they they were taping uh, his part of the preachers of detroit show which i did not know before i came i probably wouldn't have came uh, i'm funny acting about my worship i don't want you to stick no camera all down my throat with the worship but anyway uh we, we he got me there on the false pretenses because he didn't tell me um when when i got there uh they made us sign a contract allowing them to use the footage of us there so you guys will be seeing me in my red shawl in that scene okay when it comes to that part um so i'll give you more uh the rest of this uh at that time but um after he said that <laughs> about his two-year-old niece and jesus um and 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 he saw that I wouldn't budge because I kept on with it. You still should have made a call to come to Jesus. You still should have put in there that the city need to repent from their sins. My city, Detroit, is one of the most corrupt cities on the planet. They are 
crazy. Our mayor went to jail because he was a kingpin. Just had his hand in everything. I used to do security for his wife and uh, children when they would be out at Belle Isle uh, picnic and stuff. They would hire our company to dispatch uh, security to be around the perimeter. Uh, while they played and enjoyed themselves. I mean, they lived like the Obamas. <laughs> you know, they thought they were untouchable also, you know. Um, but in the end, clink, clink, you know, what's done in the dark always come to light. You know, our mayor ended up in prison for 27 years. He's serving right now. So... Yeah, you know, I, God would never, he would never give a prophecy through anybody to a city telling them they're going to have all this, you know, prosperity without having to change. So um, after he said that and, and noticed I wouldn't budge, you know, off of that point, um, and he knew I was right <laughs> in saying that, he said, this is what this jack leg snake water tear preacher said to me quote well not everything can be covered in one sermon i'll try to mention jesus more in my next sermons end quote so let me get this together let me get, let me help me out here so out of three hours of preaching you could not find one space to mention Jesus or his offer to salvation. Okay. How does that make any sense? Like I said, God would never restore a city without true repentance. Now, I'm not a prophet, but God is telling me that he is raising up an army to go out and spread the gospel into the city streets of Jesus Christ and for me to help train them to do so in this season. I just went out and paid $50 for a whiteboard for the training that he has me doing that's coming. Okay? And he tells me to tell them I'm coming. Tell them I'm coming soon. Okay? I'm not a prophet. So, some of you, and some of you even watch uh, one of my videos where you saw the message, that same message. Tell them I'm coming soon from the Holy Ghost. Come through. But you are allegedly his prophet. And God allegedly told you to get on camera in front of millions of people and tell them that God is restoring our city and giving people better jobs, houses, cars, mansions, businesses with no warnings to get right. That's what, what he told you. And you, you're going to roll with that. Okay. So basically, he's just like the rest of them. And I don't support him. Or his so-called ministry. Folks is going to like him. Because he's a white man. With black church training. Okay. He know how to hoop. He know how to holler. He know how to run around and jump. And, and dance and sweat. Okay. Make his voice rise and fall. At the right peaks and moments in time. Okay. He know how to get you on a fleshly high. Okay. And, and get that collection plate out. To move. <laughs> move around the room and get your money and then he's on to the next city okay what he preaches is not going to get anyone into heaven so he's preaching in vain matthew 7 21 through 23 foretells what's going to happen to him and the rest of them not everyone who says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter in Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out devils and in your name perform many miracles in, in, in your name? And then I will say unto them, I know you not away from me, you workers of iniquity. Okay. You know, they are not doing the will of God, beloveds. They are playing with God's ministry. Okay. Um, I'm not about to co-sign no mess. Okay. Jesus said this would happen in the parable of the tares and the wheat. There are some wheat among the tares, okay? And that's why God haven't plucked out their ministry yet because there are still people there who are wheat and whose hearts he's working in. That's why he's, when, they, when the field hand said, do you want us to pluck them all out? He said, no, because when you pluck out the tares, you might pluck out some of the wheat, okay? But I pray to God, open eyes and ears you know to this message and that a lot of people wake up and get out 
of that you know um me i seek the truth i find it i spread it the bible tells us that it is our responsibility to expose false teachers so i pray the lord like i said opens up ears and eyes okay and hearts as well in closing understand beloveds that these false teachers are a payment curse for people who reject the truth the the truth of god the bible says that there would come a time when they would not endure sound doctrine but would wanting to have their ears tickled okay they will uh, accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn their ears away from the truth aside from this okay so beloveds don't be one of those okay then real quick after all of of that didn't timothy say to me oh yeah i just remember something else that god told me when i was laying hands on you at the conference he told me to tell you to stop doing preachers of uh, of videos and focus talking more about yourself because you have a gift of writing <laughs> end quote and i laughed i said mm -hmm. He don't want, want me to see and review the season of Preachers of Detroit. But the devil is a liar. But you know, but hey, you know. So with that being said, the man, the prophet of God, has spoken. I shouldn't do the reviews. So y'all shouldn't watch. But I'm going to put them up anyway for the three people who may want to start living in the truth. Okay? <laughs> I will have the first one up on Friday, February 20th. The show airs at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? Um, this has been a Living in the Truth moment with your sister, Evangelist Dawn B. Anderson, BKA Truth Seeker 5000. You guys be blessed, and I love you much. Bye.